law and regulation that generate, which is not irrelevant to many of you, but the more policies can be clear, focused, precise, and well thought through, well solutioned, the less re regulation there will be simply by that fact. But there's certainly the convergence reviews broad approach is that part of our part of our objective is to reduce the amount of regulation across the board um, in a way that uh, hopefully is in the interest of all the players, consumers, participants, and producers. Richard, can I add to that? Oh, sorry. No, I, was, I, was, I was just going to add to that. Um, it depends on your sure definition. Make the microphone uh, when you speak yes, as well. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it also depends on your definition of regulation. In, in my area, in part of my world, there's a lot of regulation that's in place associated with addressing market failures and assistance to sectors. Um, for example, you know, offset um, taxation issues for the film sector and television sector. So um, it is about getting the balance right. Um, and the fundamental focus of what we're trying to achieve is something that's absolutely focused on giving the consumer what they want, what they expect, and what they value um, for the 21st century. Welcome to UT. It's really a point, Terry, um, and it's about language. It's about developing about a communication right mm. or right to communication. So you need to be aware of the fact that that's got a very specific meaning since the copyright act is born in 2000 mm. and probably avoided. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see that. Okay. And, and if you are commenting, maybe you could stand up because we've got a very full room and there are people up the back who may not be able to hear people up the front. So, um, Peter? Sorry, yeah, Tom, did you give Peter the... Uh, it's not actually an amplifier, it's a recording device. Um, Are we straight? Yes, yeah, sure. Good. Well, you know, this is direct to both. Sure. Okay. Both to both to both to both. Your respective capacity is the obvious element of the room. Uh, to what extent realistically on servers outside. Uh, look, I think that's, that's clearly true and it's obviously on our minds constantly and, and, and we haven't formed a view about, about how we might regard that. Although in, in listening to people and reading material, a couple of things are kind of emerging which might be helpful. The, the, the kind of undifferentiated internet of stuff that is out of control and global it is increasingly less so. Um, yes, there is some material which is like that. There is other material which is um, we, we, where the producers have an investment in, in every sense of that word, in, um, in having a location which might be Australia. Um, I mean, if, if you look at the growth of uh, IPTV, over the top IPTV, so true internet product, not sort of a, another version of doing pay television, a lot of the walled garden content that comes over the top like Apple TV and so on, um, you pay for it. And when you pay for it, there is an entity in this jurisdiction that in one way or another is involved in the commercial transfer. Um, so th there are 
there is, while a convergence is happening, there is also a balkanization of web content into many, many different forms and models, business models, delivery models, production models. Um, some of those are much more tractable to the potential for local rules than others. So it doesn't solve the problem. The other thing is that um, within countries in the world, there is enormous development in, in local jurisdictions, especially the United States, getting to grips with all this. For example, I was reading the other day that Netflix, and you, you all know the volume of American online material that is generated by Netflix users. Netflix is in serious discussion with the relevant authorities about closed captioning on its over-the-top online delivered movies and television programs. Now, that, that's not the behaviour of an undifferentiated, out-of-control feed of material that doesn't take heed of any nation. Um, I mean, closed captioning is is uh, very policy policy laden. And so that's just an example of a point I think that in many countries, and perhaps at a different rate and, and with different uh, focuses, people are creeping up on the ways to get internet material more into the policy frame of that, of that country. And, and this, I think, overall means that um, all of us uh, can be a bit, a, a bit more analytical about what's possible in the interest of the producer of the material, no matter where they are, as well as consumers. And, and, the, th and the third thing, of course, is that, um, and this is true of regulation in media more broadly, that, that uh, evolving global sensitivities about, about particular issues uh, can create transnational regulatory dispositions which in due course may address that. That's clearly the case with illegal material and material which is to do with pedophilia and stuff like that. I mean, there's enormous, and, 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 and net, net security, net education, is very concerned with people in this room who know a lot more about this than me, a very developing view about international cooperation in that regard. So they're just some ways that take a bit of the, of, of the, it blunts a bit the basic point, which is still valid. But at the end of the day, a lot of net material is almost uncontrolled. That said, the question of whether the, the internet is by its very nature inherently unregulatable, which you know, we heard much of in sort of the mid 1990s, there's, there's reasons reasons to question that. I think more some of the issues are around some of the inadvertent consequences of trying to apply regulations in one jurisdiction that are out of, out of whack with others. I think we shouldn't underestimate the extent to which, as, as Malcolm was saying, some of the key transnational players want to be good corporate citizens in the environments in which, in which they operate. And if we were to think about you know, some of the largest companies in this, in this space, such as Apple, Google, and others, they, you know, there, there will be some sort of um, cost-benefit analysis applied to questions of compliance with, with local regulations, with an eye to being operate, operating in those environments in the medium term. That's not to say uh, those who want to find a way around regulations won't be able to, they almost certainly will. But it is, it is to recognise that the space is not as inherently unstable as we perhaps assume. What it does point to is the need in thinking about regulatory frameworks for some degree of international regulatory harmonisation. There's no question where uh, frameworks in a particular jurisdiction, be it Australia or indeed be it a state of Australia, and that certainly arises from time to time, are wildly at variance with, say, standards in Europe or the United States to take the two largest markets that will clearly, you know, there will clearly be avoidance in those environments. So framing a national response does require consideration of international rules, norms and practices we can follow. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Brian? Uh, yeah, we might go with someone down the back. But, um, ben. 
and then come back to you. Thank you. 